Hey guys, it's Philip Drujinian. Had a little walk a couple of days ago. Filmed a couple of streets. Uh, first one, uh, this is the treasury. Probably the emperor's treasury, but it has a couple of emblems which are not quite matching, but whatever. Uh, who knows what type of basements do they have uh, do they have there? I also couldn't find any pictures or footage of construction of this building. All those seem to be the end of 19th century. So-called neo-Russian style that was promoted uh, in, in Russia. And that's probably because uh, the Tartaria was destroyed and the Russians uh, occasionally and uh, needed their own architectural style. But that's a whole bunch of lies. Yeah, I've been on the street. That street is Tverskaya. There is this uh, museum, also with some basement level, which is definitely not flooded because uh, we see the tracks of excavation right uh, after the fence. You see the people uh, walking a lot uh, at the lower level. Yeah, they excavate this from the fence to the building and make this look like some basement, but it's not actually because all the streets around this area. All these ancient houses have this same type of stuff. Those bricked up windows, those doors from on the second floor and stuff like this. So I decided why not film a couple more videos on this um, evidence before it gets, gets destroyed. As you know, they're trying to destroy and during the renovation they did in the little ditches in front of the walls and called them window ditch. Yeah, you heard me right, window ditch. And that window ditch is like, you know, the proof that uh, the building was constructed like this. So, but when you like, give me the picture of the building and they give you the picture without the window ditch. So I say, why it's not designed that in original? Why is designed to look this ugly like this? And why do you have to make those window ditches? But not everyone has uh, enough money to make a window ditch. Sometimes you just brick the window and that's it. That's the only money you have. Okay. But when you look up, you see all those facade details that definitely don't deserve this ugly restoration, this ugly version. Just splendid architectural design, those round balconies. Those columns on the top definitely look out of style on this building. At least this version of this draft of renovation and this door and this ladder on the second floor is so also in place. In place, yeah, right. You know, many buildings like this, many buildings like this. When you see this ugly, ugly way of hiding it. When you see all this architectural, architectural out of out of the box details, you know, which are not, you know, even half 20th century. It's just, you know, way back in the days, antique style. Who would have put these antique details on those buildings in 19th century? Who? Who in clear mind? But if you have those details from other buildings which are right now destroyed, you can probably use those and decorate your ugly renovation. Yeah, so you see the parts of those facades. Ancient facades that were probably restored on those buildings that were destroyed. Yeah, people uh, talking about the sub-basement floor. What about the basement that is under the sub-basement? So it's like two basements, sub-basement? Or what do you have three floor basement that is uh, sub 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 basement oh yeah that sounds good what about <sighs> no I don't want to ask you anything you said it all in your videos you have nothing to debunk because you're not debunking you're just you know following the Wikipedia step without doing your own research okay it's what I do finding those mansions. For example, this is another Morozov mansion. I mentioned him. 
<laughs> I have mentioned his mentions before and this is just another one sorry it was on reconstruction and probably hiding some sub basement windows again yeah they have it yeah you can see it clearly they hide in it with the textile cloth just was not to picture it and they have it on a plan yeah but you can go there you, you cannot just you know visit the place because it's some type of organization already there yeah why would you build some type of fortress like this fortress type of house and create these ugly windows I wouldn't say you any good reason why not build another floor on top make it look fancier okay and have a no window uh, basement like everybody else put the wine inside and stuff like this maybe some maps <laughs> by the way we're gonna talk about maps in post scripting and what about symbolism all those mosaics that appear on the top of the reconstructed buildings all those domes they look out of place why does this house this construction has to have a dome just tell me oh those engineers and architectures were just you know guys with the kitsch type of you know taste no taste at all no 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 probably not probably they had taste probably they had the style the culture to create something that is above and we see it sticking above we see beautiful buildings and uh, we can only take the explanation of the officials right because we cannot visit each and every house like this one has a door from the second floor window <laughs> yeah and the rest of the streets has the same look at this all the houses have the second floor window that is made as a door right now you walk inside the house you see some basements you see some beauties like this this is the entrance to the restaurant it's in the backyard of some ancient house and you see this arch there it's ancient beautiful arch that is not even outside right now it's inside of one of the houses yes the restaurant has a great deal of using it in uh, this place of for instagram selfies and stuff like this on the outside you won't find any arches of course but yeah it looks like this the inside was probably uh, less excavated than the outside those people showed me the picture of this street in 50s with the huge you know type of uh, they called walls but you know it's probably mean the hill that is like very long and looks like a wall so all these circle streets around Moscow will look like the walls probably just the buried fortress walls or some transportations that are right now not used like railways this architectural style of Stalin's is repeating what we had before the destruction of Tartu and some remains are still here although we have like a century of renovation behind we still have, have some decent evidence to, to claim those buildings are not what they look like and then it's economically explainable when you use something old to create something new and uh, they kind of save uh, all this stuff for for the future research maybe then you forget about it and then you lose uh, use all those facilities for parking for example like this this old house has like three level of parking i'll let you think about it by your own this walk is over but it's not the last one as you know we have bears on the streets in russia but we also have ancient hidden star fortresses which are right now looking like this and i showed you one before probably the side of another one right near the embankment with the buried buildings on the top of it unexplainable stuff Merry Christmas and Happy New Year guys.
the next year of 2020 is gonna be the continuum of the research. Hi guys, seen a video of Black Sheep Researcher and that's gonna be my postscriptum today. Uh, he made a video about um, the greatest lie ever told, maps. So, I have to say uh, that's a rather good uh, video, has a couple of ideas uh, which is he referring to when saying that the maps are fake. Um, I don't know if it's really fake or just uh, edited or drawn, redrawn in 19th century, who knows. What I found is that the, in Russia we also had a guy who uh, made a video about it and um, he had a couple of points and uh, the greatest point is was that uh, the we have a different centuries, so-called centuries, uh, written on the date of the maps. And so we see the, the maps from 16th century, we see the maps from 17th century, 18th century, 19th century, and so on. But sometimes um, the quality, quality of the paper of the scan of this uh, ancient map is rather good. I mean, although I'm not really aware if they had a technology of preserving uh, the archive documents as well as we have right now because we have so many so many technologies and let me read you a couple of them so the documents and books mm, in uh, hard cover uh, you can use them and uh, store them uh, in vertical state uh, by the way you should you should place them freely uh, that uh, you have uh, like a, a distance for about um, an inch in, on the top of, of the book uh, and the bookshelf itself so the uh, the books of large format uh, are placed in horizontal state maps are placed in circle cases and so or it could be placed horizontal in the folders and uh, the store uh, storage with the vertical uh, rod boxes and vertical special uh, hangers. The most mass of archive documents is placed horizontal in the so-called covered uh, coverage, uh, so in the, in the protective coverage, right? In, so, in some type of uh, folders or boxes at least and uh, they protect the documents from the uh, from the light from the dust from the grease mud whatever moisture mechanical biological destruction or in fact the and uh, the rapid uh, changing or increasing of uh, the moisture uh, can provoke the uh, the growth of some some type of you know plaque and mushrooms whatever you call it uh, fu fungi and so it's like um, but first it starts for example on the box and then it goes inside the document so you have to check the boxes each and every time switch them change them for not to um, make the documents sick with those fungis okay uh, so the there's a plenty of others uh, like the temperature these the rules about the 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 rooms itself so it, it can't have any um, any pipes in it or any source of water it can have uh, the bookshelves are not close to the walls and stuff like this so you, you don't have the contact from the shelves and uh, and the walls and all this, you know, it's just a huge list. It's just books, books, and books about how do you do it. For example, uh, Russian authors Zaguleva and Bloomberg. Um, so uh, this Bloomberg guy wrote a huge, huge book, and it has like about like 200 pages, and it's called 
the uh, safe uh, and safety storage and restoration of documents the recommendations and it was published in 2008 like 12 years ago so we have like this book here and uh, I can read and read and read about it but it's very big of course and we have a law of how to safe and sound all this stuff uh, from ancient times we have archives we have a bunch of stuff so it's not like we don't have anything but what did they have before what did they have in 16th 17th 18th century how did they kept it to the time when we have all this technology of storage and if they didn't have any technologies before so the point of this Russian guy is that um, since the quality of the paper of different uh, maps of different periods of time are comparable to each other and um, you know we don't see like 16th century map totally destroyed uh, in comparison to 19th century it's pretty ma much decent quality we see like both both centuries and that's like 16 300 years past to 19th century so how did they kept it kept it managed to keep it safe to 19th century it's like a huge problem and i don't know what is the answer actually because they don't have uh, any decent insulation back in the days they don't have heating systems and um, i'll tell you what if we uh, if we th you think about that that is the same like right now and back then then you should read the official uh, you know official history uh, the ancient buildings were built without insulation you won't find any insulation so uh, you cannot even live in those uh, facilities <laughs> in those buildings but they lived in it and uh, because each and every time you have a winter or other climate change for seasons and stuff like this you have these moisture on the walls and that's the Fuji's and from the block and all this tuberculosis and all this place and you just cannot handle it without the insulation in Russia we had like uh, wooden houses and stuff like this so that's probably why we don't have much you know much castles and all this you know because you know most of the russians lived in huge wooden houses and that was good because wood is way better than stone in this you know re relation and um if it did climate change and uh, we didn't have winter before so that also could be explained in it but still i wouldn't believe that just the same weather whole year probably we had some difference in seasons and stuff like this but whatever um, in Russia not not only Russia Norway Finland Sweden a bunch of people building the houses from the wood I don't know about different countries uh, everybody else did it but most of Europe is just you know stone castles rocks and bricks and uh, just imagine how much how much fuel you have to you know uh, use how much uh, money how much uh, time how much efforts to keep those papers for centuries in a good condition okay that the people used not to wash at all they were like washing one time before they you know when they were marrying and when they were dying is what i say what they say the officials say that the people on the balls by the way have you found any pictures of the balls uh, from 19th century any photographs I haven't neither I haven't found them yet and uh, so during the balls they didn't have any toilet so in in a huge palace like Versailles there's no not a single toilet and so where did they go during the balls did they all run to the streets or to the park or to the bushes just imagine uh, a couple hundred noble people go and uh, take a lick during the ball for a couple of times 
Uh, I mean that 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 is you know this is the official explanation. The official explanation is also telling us that the people were uh, living on the second and third floors, you know, abandoning the first floor just because the crap on the street was so intense, and uh, so they had to move to the second floor and build the letters and stuff like this, and uh, the lower floor, sub basement floor. I was uh, uh, rented by somebody more poor and uh, the logic is stopping about around there and they this is based on some you know dirt uh, cleaners that are left near the doors and some houses and uh, so that you have a dirt doesn't mean you have it full of crap so the the the, the sub basement floor was unable um, you you were unable to use it as a the you know, living and resting area. So this is uh, very stupid because if somebody rented this from you for money, then uh, you probably also could live there and uh, don't you know waste your house uh, area for some stupid reasons uh, I don't know it's my logic I don't know what, what do you what do you guys think about it um, was it actually full of crap or is just uh, that the officials are full of crap okay so if they were full of crap back in the days how could they preserve all those documents and maps so safe that we can visualize that they can they're probably the same quality you know by the way, check it by yourself. Uh, maybe you will find uh, a huge amount of uh, ancient maps that were destroyed by the time and we have only pieces of them. But uh, of what I found and what that guy found on the Gallica website, he sees that different maps uh, probably were made up in 19th century or redrawn. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows, guys? So that's the point that we actually have to talk about when we talk about um, ancient maps. So uh, I'll leave a link on the Black Sheep Researcher video and uh, if you're Russian I'll also leave you a link uh, to the video about the, the uh, why are ancient maps made in 19th century and uh, probably you can watch it with this subtitle um, both captions from auto detect from Russian to English and you can probably use it okay so thanks a lot for watching guys and um, hope you like this post script and see you later bye